Okay, guys, now the this video is going to answer a question, and it's going to be similar to the last video, but I want to answer this question a little bit more specifically, so I'm going to read it to you. Uh, this is from Cindy Fitzgerald. Hi, Cindy. Uh, thank you for writing the question, by the way. I love questions. Love, love, love questions. Um, hello, beautiful Naya. Aw, thank you. I need to ask a question. I've been watching this video about people who do channeling. My question is, what about the ones that say they are channeling Jesus and other religious leaders? Are they straight up lying, or are these entities lying to these, channel these channeling people? I'm not trying to be disrespectful to these people, but I know the truth and know that there was no Jesus as we were taught to believe. Okay. All right, well, first of all, there are like 30-some Jesuses. And if somebody were to go into a meditative state and call on a Jesus that fit what they believed that it was, they could absolutely talk to that Jesus. Now, most of the Jesuses um, don't, and I say most, most of the Jesuses are pretty cool. And they really, um, if somebody was really focused and they really lined up with their vibration, they would talk to them, but they would be very joy, love, and light. They would be very positive, upbeat um, messages, and they probably would not go into great detail. But there are a few, there are a couple, uh, about three that I can think of, that if they were, uh, one of them was the one that was channeled by, um, who was that? There was a book about the Course in Miracles. That was actually one of the Jesuses that was being channeled that made the Course of Miracles. And although there was a lot of helpful stuff in the Course of Miracles, um, because I did read through part of it and then I vibrationally skimmed the rest of it. Um, I read parts of it before I died and put it away. I also read a couple of the Seth books and I read a lot of books on other religions and such before, you know, in the years before I died. Then I died and came back, and a lot of that stuff I came back to, like Seth stuff, for instance, which I loved, um, but I didn't understand hardly any of it, and I'm not a dumb person. I'm pretty smart and really book smart, but I would read those books over and over trying to get it. But there was a part of me that just loved those books, and I didn't know why. Then I died and came back to the books and read them again and went, oh, now it all makes sense. And, uh, yeah, so there's that. So, there is that Jesus, and there's at least three of them. So, could a channeler, could somebody that was channeling, who was trying to talk to a Jesus that was a uh, more, uh, what do I say, and say it nicely, like bossy, uh, patriarchal, uh, kind of a lawmaker, like, the Course in Miracle Jesus, he's just, uh, yeah, he's not my favorite at all. I, I didn't spend much time talking to him. I recognized him instantly, but I just didn't want to talk to him uh, because he's very, well, he, he's very much that he's a part of this whole thing. We have to have him, and um, which is so not true. And but he's very much that's the energy that he was built with, though. Remember that all of these entities were built from um, need, request, requirements sent out to law of attraction to create these entities for humans. So you can't blame the Jesuses; they were created by the people who who wanted them there. Uh, you can't blame the Jehovah; he was actually created by beings as well, not so much humans, but other beings that were here. So, the answer to the question is, yes, they can absolutely talk to the Jesuses, and uh, if they're talking to a Jesus, it depends upon what that Jesus is saying as to which Jesus that they're channeling. Uh, but if you focus, you're God. If you say, I want to talk to a Jesus, and you've got a picture in your mind of what that Jesus did and was and is, you can absolutely lock on to the closest uh Jesus and have a conversation with him. It's not that hard to have a conversation with anything, anybody. Channeling is not difficult at all. Telepathy is not difficult at all. The only reason it is is because you believe that it's difficult. Uh, the second you don't believe that, uh, it becomes very, very easy. You have to trust yourself a lot. 
but it's very, very easy to do. So, yes, they could talk to Jesus now. That's not the only thing they could be talking to. Because depending on why they're doing the channeling and the vibration that they are at, they could also, well, let's put it this way. The fourth dimensional beings know what humans believe in. They know what they need. They know who they, they know about Jehovah. They know about Allah. They know about Buddha. They know about Krishna. They know about Jesus and Mary. They know about all the saints. They know about all this stuff. So if they want to get your energy, then if you're not careful and really, really focused, it is more likely that you will get a being that will say that they're Jesus and really, really want you to interact with them. They'll pull you in. Now, these are other entities, the ones that are trying to get your energy, try to get you to worship them, try to get you to need them and follow them. More than likely, that is not one of the Jesuses. The Jesuses that even the ones that that I don't care for so much, even them, um, they just barely pull you. They're more like a, a give and take of energy. Uh, they will give it, but they'll they'll take as well. It's give and take. These other entities, um, and they're much more likely to be saints or angels is what I've seen out there is that they really like to be saints and angels, especially angels. And they will really use that old whole love thing. Now you need to refer to my last video on the one to 10 range on, on love because these entities will absolutely here, here's a person who's on the planet Earth who has had zero to one on a one to ten scale of the vibrations of love. Really, really, uh, it's not here. Not here at all. Because love um, equals a lot of things like just uh, forgiveness and getting along. And forgiveness and getting along is really contraindicated when you're creating the third dimension wherein you're trying to get people to come at each other so there can be a lot of contrast. Uh, love is more like, I don't care what you do, you can do what you do, I'll do what I do. We come together and there's no contrast there because we're not fussing. I'm not trying to make you do anything, you're not trying to make me do anything. And that's how love, big time love is. And that doesn't work in third dimension, so that's the reason why it, it, the vibration was kind of, uh, well, it was fractaled down into something else. Um, right, so... What they're really, really big in is these other entities, and they can be anything from a uh, pigeon or a gecko. They can be really low-level, fourth-dimensional, uh, what you would call aliens, that are using what you would call kind of like um, creating a vision by using vibrations that go into people's head, uh, so it becomes very, very real to them. Or they can actually show up and they can shapeshift. Shape there are others that can shapeshift. And they can show up in people's bedroom or next to a lake when they're out walking in the woods. And they will dump this, um, you know, again, I would put them at about a 3 on a 1 to 10 scale of love on the person. And because you've had none, that 3 is overwhelming. It feels like, oh, this has got to be the end all, beat all. This has got to be the real thing because the real thing is the only thing that could dump that kind of love on me and make me feel that way. But right there, that's the key. It, with real love, nobody dumps any kind of love on you at all. Uh, you have all the love that you will ever need from within. Uh, and you don't even think about giving love to anyone or receiving love from anyone because you have more than you need. It's like uh, breathing air just walking around in a regular world, you would never say, okay, well, here, let me breathe into your mouth so you can have a breath of air. They don't need to. It's right there. They're breathing it themselves. That's what true unconditional love is like out there on the other side, outside the game. In here, it's not so. It's like really been a shortage of it. We're all gasping for air, reaching for what is very normal on the other side. And we uh, really struggle with that not being here. And then we try to get it according to what this society rules are, and it still doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right because that's not real love. Uh, most of the time it's not even close. I wouldn't even put it on the 1 to 10 scale most of the time. Okay, so these other beings will absolutely show up and act like they are 
fill in the blanks and interact with the person and give them information and and uh, go back and forth and most of it is a clarifying and a, a redoing of what information has already been given because they they're just trying to interact with the person to get them to give their energy up to them uh, you they want your energy because human beings have an incredible amount of energy flowing through them and they're very very easy to trick to give their energy away so uh, they become prime targets for anyone and everyone in the fourth dimension and they, well, it's always been that way so uh, now there was a protection order that was supposed to be around this planet but that was broken and that's a whole nother story um, that we won't go into but as far as channeled people channeling um, there's a whole bunch of beings that you can channel um, and if you don't know what you're doing and you really don't know who you're talking to they can say whatever they want to it's kind of like talking to somebody on the internet uh, it can be a, um, a 50 year old woman that's playing like they're my best friend in reality they're a 35 year old serial killer setting me up to kill me you know it, it could be anybody you don't know and until you can vibrationally read them then it, it is tricky to say the least um, now I can read them. It doesn't work. They don't even try uh, at this point. They don't, they don't even try. They wouldn't even. It would be hilarious to see them try. But if you were channeling, and if you wanted to be a channel, then you just want to be very aware of how you feel. Um, if you're channeling a being, and in any way, shape, or form, they make you feel less than them, or that you need them in any way or need to do anything then uh, they're a lower vibratory being period I don't care if they say they're Jehovah or Jesus or Mary or I don't I don't care uh, the creator of all that is I don't care if they're saying that you're not good enough you need to do something else or you need them or, you, or in any way shape or form they're a lower vibratory being because that's just not true you don't need anybody you're a god you're a god in amnesia and you're trying to figure things out, but that doesn't change the fact that you are a god. Okay? Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that explained that. Um, I would not attack any of these people. For whatever reason, it's a part of their creationary process to either go to the beings that are Jesus or other religious leaders and come back with information and all the people that are listening to them, uh, they have agreed to that. It's like I've told you guys over and over again, it is a part of the game. There's nothing wrong with it. What they're doing is perfectly fine. It probably is not where you are in the moment. So you can listen to them, be fascinated by it, add it, go, that's an interesting way of playing the game. Uh, not for me, thank you very much, but it's an interesting way of playing the game. And appreciate it for what it is. All right? Okay, well, hopefully, Cindy, hopefully that answered your question. If not, ask it again. Uh, you know, guys know I love questions. So, yeah, that's it for this one. Uh, I love you guys so much. Choo-choo chugs, and I'll see you later. Bye now.